every Wednesday night, they had the theology students who laid out in a Bible study. And one particular Wednesday night, a theology student gave a Bible study on the Sabbath. And my father heard reading from Genesis chapter 2, 2 and 3. I'm sure that you are very familiar with the text where he said, On the seventh day, God finished the work which he had done, and he rested from all the work which he had done, and he blessed the seventh day, and hallowed the seventh day because all the work which he had done. He went home and read and reread this text. And, you know, he asked himself, if God finished the work on the seventh day, if he rested on the seventh day, if he blessed the seventh day, if he hallowed the seventh day, what am I doing on the first day? And then what did he do? He went through the city of Rome looking for a seven-day Sabbath-keeping church. And he asked a number of Catholic priests and Protestant pastors if they knew of a church that observed the seven-day Sabbath according to the Scripture. But my dad was told there was no seven-day Sabbath-keeping church because seven-day Sabbath-keeping is Jewish. It was nailed to the cross. It's no longer practiced by Christians today. Well, my mom and dad... They felt that if it's in the Bible, it must be true. And when they could not locate the seven-day Sabbath-keeping church, you know what they did? By themselves, my mom, my dad, I was only a small baby at that time, decided to honor the Lord on the Sabbath by themselves in their own home. And they thought that they were the only seven-day Sabbath-keeper on the face of the earth, living under the shadow of the Vatican. <laughs> what do you say to that? And you know what happened? About a year later, my mom got an invitation to attend the Bible study, and the, my father went along out of curiosity, and the gentleman leading out in the Bible study was an Adventist preacher, Pastor Silo Agnello, who passed away a few years ago. This was the first time that my mom and dad came in contact with our church, which in those days consisted only of six members who met in a private home. We did not have a church building. We only had a nucleus of believers. Today, it's a different ball game. When I was back in Rome last summer, mamma mia, we have 10 churches. Not only Italian church, we have a nice Filipino church. I think our Filipino friends will appreciate that. We almost have 200 Filipinos there in the, in, in the city of Rome. We have a Spanish church, a Romanian church. We have all sorts of churches, not only Italian, but also foreign churches right in the city of Rome. Honoring the Savior on the Sabbath became a testing truth for my, ma for my dad and for the whole family. My father was working building construction as a, as a carpenter. And when he asked for the Sabbath free, he was fired. For six months, he was unemployed. He went out day after day from building site to building site, looking for a job. There was plenty of work. Right after the Second World War, there was all sorts of rebuilding going on because of all the bombing of the Nazis. But whenever he asked for the Sabbath free, he would be shown the door. After six months, our family was starving. My dad told us the story many times of the morning when mom and dad became aware of the fact that there was no money, no food. We were starving. And in desperation, they prayed to the Lord. It was a prayer of desperation, Lord, to be faithful to thee. Our family is starving. As I'm going out today, as I have done for the past six months, oh Lord, please touch the heart of a prospective employer that may be giving me a job. And after the prayer of desperation, my father went out. And uh, he went to a building site where he had not been before. And uh, he approached the builder and asked him if he could use him. Um, he explained his experience, the places where he had worked. And without a moment of hesitation, the builder told my dad, you can change and get started right away. But my father hastened to explain that he would not be able to work on Saturday because Saturday is his holy day in which he wanted to honor the Savior. Now, the builder became sarcastic. Did you come looking for a job or for vacation? If you are not interested to work, why don't you get out of this place? My father was a big man, bigger than me. You know what? He broke down in tears. Sir, I did not come looking for vacation. Our family is starving. For the last six months, everybody has treated me like you. We have no food and no money. I plead with you to give me the chance 
or what I want to do is to honor the Savior on the Sabbath. I'm prepared to work on Sunday, to work at night, to give up vacation time. I'll do anything that it takes to prove myself. Give me a chance. You know what? That builder was touched to see a big man like my dad crying for wanting to honor the Savior on the Sabbath in a country like Italy where 95% of the Catholic only go to church three times in their life when they are hatched, matched, dispatched. You know what that means? <laughs> when they are baptized, married, and buried. Those are the three trips they make to church. And here was my dad crying for wanting to honor the Savior every week on the Sabbath. But somehow that builder was touched. And you know what he told my dad? Well, why don't you change and get started? And let's see what is going to happen. You know what happened? For the next 50 years, my father never lost a day of work in the city of Rome. Apparently, the Lord was testing his faith. Isn't it so? And when he proved to be faithful, obviously, he was rewarded. The Sabbath became a testing truth in my own youth. I grew up in Rome at the time when Saturday was a school day. And I remember that some of the Adventist family did not want to go through the trouble of having to justify the absences of having the children expelled from school. And so many of the families sent their children to school on Saturday. But my parents were determined that we would be faithful to God in honoring his holy Sabbath day. And you know what I remember? I remember the principal of the secondary school in Piazza Mazzini, that is the name of the square where the school was located, who would tell my wife, my, not my wife, my mom, that if I would be absent for three consecutive Saturdays without medical excuse, I would be expelled. And you know what my mommy did? <laughs> she took me to the family doctor every week. And the doctor was very helpful. He wrote a very funny medical excuse saying that Samuele Bacchiocchi on such and such a Saturday was psychologicamente incapacitato. What does it mean? <laughs> Psychologically incapacitated. My mind was working fine during the week, but when Saturday came, it, my brain snapped out. It went out of order. And the principal accepted it because it had been prepared by a doctor. It was an official medical excuse. I also remember the problem I had with a Catholic priest that came twice a week, right there in the public school. They still do it today, by the way to teach us Il Catechismo Catolico, the Catholic Catechism. When he heard that I was not a Catholic, Protestante, Protestante Adventista, Adventist Protestant, which in his mind was the worst possible breed of Protestantism. You know what he did? He told the class, Sam Bacchiocchi sitting down there is a Protestante heretic or heretical Protestant. Keep away from him. Keep away from him. You know why I remember it? Whenever I try to, uh, try to approach my friends to strike conversation with them, they would say, stay lontano, keep away from us, keep away from us. Tu sei un eretico, you are a heretic. Tu sei un judeo, you are a Jew. They did not want to talk with me. When you are a teenager, you want to be accepted by your friends. Isn't it true? I was heartbroken. Many times I went home crying. Mom, Papa, don't send me to school anymore. Everybody hates me at school. I don't want to go to school anymore. I remember my father, godly man, dignified man. He would look me straight into my eyes and say, Samuele, you stand up for what you know to be God's truth. God will honor your commitment. This is the challenge I like to pass on to all of us, that if we stand up for what we know to be God's truth, sometimes we may have to suffer ridicule, rejection, persecution, but ultimately the Lord will honor our commitment. Because of all of this problem of ridicule, rejection, persecution, I started dreaming. While I was still a teenager, 14, 15, 16 years old, I was dreaming already that one day, if the Lord would give me the opportunity, I said, I want to investigate which is God's holy day and what it should mean to our Christian life today. I felt that if I had to suffer, I wanted to suffer for the sake of biblical truth, not a denominational tradition. And my dream came true on July 1977. 